talking about deliverance, freedom from the spirit of witchcraft. Freedom from the spirit of witchcraft. So get ready, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to go, and I'm going to try to um, you know, be, be thorough, but, but also quick, because we want to go into some ministry time tonight. I believe there's some specific things that the Lord wants to do and bring freedom to in people's lives. Um, you know, the, we're, we're, we're in a season right now, in you know, the month of October, where it's kind of more out in the open, more kind of in our face. But the truth of the matter is, is that the occult or witchcraft has a permeating influence in our culture. In our culture, not just in African culture, not just in South American culture, not just in you know, what we would think of as primitive cultures, but in the Western culture, in the United States of America, the, the whole realm of witchcraft and the occult, has, there, there's an underbelly, there's an influence that is permeating through the underbelly of our culture. What does the word occult mean? The word occult means hidden or secret arts. It is secretive Arts. It is hidden and secretive arts. It is attempting to tap into supernatural knowledge or supernatural power or supernatural influence outside of the one true living God. Outside of the one true living God. How many people know that God is supernatural? God is supernatural. When God, God does things that to us is supernatural, to him it's just him being God. When God heals somebody, when God delivers somebody, when, when God releases supernatural insight, prophetic words, like what happened to Wes when he steps into that church and all of a sudden those demons are getting nervous and that man is beginning to prophesy and by the Spirit of God operating in a supernatural realm. God is supernatural. That's who he is by his very nature. But here's, here's something else. Not everything supernatural is of God. God is supernatural, but supernatural is not necessarily God. And the word occult, O-C-C-U-L-T, it basically means any type of supernatural influence or power outside of the one true living God. Any type of attempt to contact the spiritual realm outside of the one true living God. And there, there's literally thousands of ways that this happens. We're going to read some of it in a few minutes, and we're going to focus in on witchcraft from, from, uh, from Deuteronomy 18. But, but any attempt to, to contact the spiritual world, any attempt to get influence and power or supernatural knowledge outside of Jesus Christ, it is strictly forbidden, and it is the demonic realm, whether people realize it or not. You see... We were created for a relationship with God. We're created in the image of God. We're created with a hunger for something spiritual. We're created with a hunger for something more than ourselves, something beyond ourselves. But the problem is we get drawn into things uh, because of that hunger, because of that desire. Some people innocently get drawn into it. Some people get drawn into it um, and, they, and they, they know exactly what they're doing. Again, there's a whole wide range of that. But we're drawn because we are meant for a relationship with God. And the devil is very happy to give you an alternative counterfeit version. And that's what the occult is. It's a counterfeit version. The occult has been around since the Garden of Eden. When Satan first slipped in with the first temptation where you can be like God. Eat from this tree. It's essentially eating from the wrong tree. It's essentially trying to be like God, trying to become your own God, trying to, again, tap into hidden secret knowledge, secret power. It's been around since the beginning. It's been around in cultures. I mean, that's why it's written in the Bible here thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 through 14, we're going to read a bunch of these things. Thousands of years ago, these same exact things exist today. These same exact things exist Back in the book of Acts then, a couple thousand years after Deuteronomy was written. And now here we are, fast forward to 2022. These same things exist in every culture around the world, every nation around the world. They might take on slightly different shapes, slightly different names, but it's the same exact spirits, the same exact type of occultic activity. Okay? It's a major open door to evil spirits. Look at Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, he's speaking to the children of Israel after being delivered from Egypt. 
and about entering the promised land. He says, when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. He said, there's, there's nations that you are coming into and, and, and they, they do practices, idolatry. They worship false gods. They practice witchcraft and sorcery, and we'll read this list here. But he says, don't be like those nations. Don't do the things that those nations do. Don't learn the customs of those nations surrounding you. Verse 10, he starts to go through a list. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. What does that mean? Child sacrifice. That's what that means. It means these false gods required blood. It's no different today. These false gods, these demons, these idols, they, 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 they want blood, and they innocent blood. And, and there's various forms of that that happen all throughout history, and it's happening even today in various forms, including abortion, by the way. It also um, fits into that category. Makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Now he starts to go through a list. Or one who practices witchcraft. First one on the list. When he starts talking about these occultic practices. The first one on the list, he says, witchcraft. Or a soothsayer. Or one who interprets omens. Or a sorcerer. Or one who conjures spells. Or a medium. Or a spiritist. Or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess listened to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Do you get the picture that he's painting here? That ingrained into the culture, ingrained into the culture of these other nations is idolatry, the worship of false gods, and occultic activity, which is tapping into the spiritual realm through demonic ways. It was ingrained into their culture. The same is true today. The same is true today. You go overseas, you go different places, and it's happening here in this nation, maybe in uh, more underground ways or maybe ways that aren't as typical like you think of, but you go to Africa and you got the witch doctors. You go to Haiti and you got the voodoo. You go to South America, you have Santeria. You have all these different versions. It's the same exact stuff, but these cultures, they practice, it's ingrained into the culture of these different nations. And here in America, you know, we have, there's witchcraft, there's, there's demonic uh, practices, there's the new age realm. Spiritism. It's all in our entertainment. It's all in our movies. It's all in our bookstores. It's interesting that, you know, people that um, kind of, you know, they might make fun of Christianity and think it's primitive. And yet all this stuff, all this stuff that's from ancient, you know, it's all being shoved in our faces like it's normal. Like that's not primitive or that's not right. You have all these TV shows about trying to contact the dead or psychics or astrology or all that stuff, right, that's being pushed in our faces, in our children's faces. And, and, and then, but yet they call Christianity like primitive or just a myth or all this stuff. It's just really interesting. So he goes through this list and he makes it very clear that this is forbidden. This is off limits. These are practices that are going to get you into deep trouble. He calls them abominations. That's a very strong word. That means God hates these practices. Why? Because they destroy the intention for mankind. Because they are rooted in the, in the demonic realm. They are, they are part of the kingdom of darkness. And they, and they wreak havoc on lives. They destroy lives. Even though many people who might get involved might think, you know what, I'm just practicing quote-unquote white witchcraft. Because, and it's, sometimes it's just good-hearted people. They don't know any better. They get drawn into spiritual practices or new age beliefs. And well, I'm just, I'm just meditating. I'm just, 
I'm just chanting and meditating. I'm just doing this to help my, you know, my, my, my life or to help people. Or, you know, I'm, I'm going to get into witchcraft, but I'm not going to do any of the dark stuff. I'm not going to harm people. I'm not going to put curses. I'm just going to try to do healing or try to, you know, read the future. And, right? and some people have good hearts and they don't know any better and they get deceived. And it's not until they come to the light and they come to, to, to reality that all of a sudden the ugliness of what they're in comes full in front of them. You'll see, you'll see that again and again with people that get involved in these kind of things. That, you know, they might think they have a spirit guide that's helping them, you know, in their business or in their entertainment or you know, giving them creativity and um, all this stuff. And then the moment they start to try to turn away, the thing becomes ugly. The true face of what that spirit is becomes real to them. I want to zone in. There's so much that could be said about these different areas. I mean, again, we could go for hours. I'm not going to go for hours, uh, but we could go for hours talking through these different branches. You know, what is divination? Divination is more of like fortune telling, seeing the future through, 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 through unclean spirits. And, you know, what is sorcery? And what is, you know, um, spiritism? All these things. But we're going to zone in on witchcraft tonight. We're going to zone in on witchcraft. God has strong words against witchcraft. Do you know that? Exodus twenty two eighteen. You shall not permit a witch to live. That, that, that was in the law. You shall not permit a witch to live. That was God's judgment. That was God's standard. And now obviously we're, we're, in, we're in a new covenant where we're not putting people to death. We're not... Please, okay? I mean, there, there, was, there was many laws in the Old Testament where to do something, you would actually be put to death. Adultery or, uh, you know, murder or other things like that, right? Um, so, so obviously we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about God's standard. We're talking about what God thinks about something. We're talking about God's righteous judgment against something, right? He says, you shall not permit a witch to live. That was his judgment. That was what he determined was accurate, which was lawful. And here we are in a season where you have kids dressing up like witches, thinking it's fun. Or even adults, just dressing up like witches, right? Thinking it's fun, thinking it's no big deal, thinking it's just this or that, right? When, when God says his plumb line is this, his plumb line is this. What is witchcraft? I'm going to dive into some definition here. What is witchcraft? Essentially, it boils down to this. The use of spiritual power in order to control people or circumstances. That's actually when you boil down what the essence of witchcraft is. It actually boils down to one word, control. Seeking to control people circumstances, according to your own will, according to what you want, according to what you need to have or want to have or decide to have. And so, but you're doing it through spiritual means. You're doing it through spiritual power. That's what it boils down to. I'm going to read a paragraph here that I had written out. The essence of witchcraft is to seek to control circumstances and or people through spiritual power. The spirit of witchcraft works in a subtle way through manipulation, intimidation, guilt, and domination. And then when people move into the intentional practice of witchcraft, they use rituals, curses, spells, or other methods to influence people and circumstances. Related to witchcraft are Wicca, Satanism, Voodoo, Paganism, Shamanism, Santeria, and similar activities. Okay, so it boils down to one word, control. I, I want to control a person. I want to control a situation. I want to have my way in a situation. And so it is rebellion. It's actually compared to rebellion because it is you exercising your own will instead of submitting to God's will or submitting to God himself. It is you wanting to control the situation, to be in charge instead of submitting to something greater than yourself. The devil likes to make people think they can be in charge. The devil likes to make people think they can be their own God. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. Eat of this tree, you'll be enlightened. You'll know good and evil. 
You'll be able to, you, you won't even need God anymore. Essentially, he's saying you can be your own God. You can be just like God without God. You can be in control. You can, you can have power over situations, over circumstances. If you have this secret knowledge, this secret information, this secret enlightenment. 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is tied to witchcraft. They go, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And so there's, there's a progression. There's a progression of different ways that witchcraft can operate. It's not always, like Wes shared his story, he was involved with, intentional witchcraft. He was involved with a group of people called a coven that were working together to, uh, to do their thing with witchcraft, to do rituals and spells and to increase their power and sacrifice, all these things that they were trying to do. It was very intentional, but that's not the only way witchcraft operates. We're going to get to that in a little bit, but I want to start in some of the more subtle ways that that same exact spirit to control others or situations can actually be operating through people, even if they don't realize that that's what it is. Because Galatians 5, verse 20, it actually names witchcraft as a work of the flesh. When it's talking about the fruit of the spirit versus the works of the flesh, it talks about how the Holy Spirit you know, tries to produce the fruit in us of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You guys grew up in Sunday school. You learned about the fruit of the Spirit, I'm sure. And then it talks about the works of the flesh. This is what the flesh produces, the sinful nature produces. And it names all these things like drunkenness and fits of anger and immorality. And then it says idolatry, witchcraft, or some translations say sorcery. It's about half and half depending on the translation. So it's actually the flesh and it's un- apart from Christ, apart from the work of the Holy Spirit, the flesh is drawn to this kind of thing. The flesh is drawn to, to have power over people. We are not meant to have control over other people. Did you know this? We are not meant to have control over other people. You are not meant to be controlled by other people. And when, when, when people don't know how to relate in healthy ways, they resort to methods of control, like guilt, like manipulation, like intimidation. We are never meant to relate to people this way. Do you know that God doesn't relate to us this way? God does not relate to us this way. He's the most powerful being in the, in, in the whole universe. He's the eternal God. He's the great I am. He's the most powerful being. But yet, what does he do? He actually does not violate our will. He doesn't force us to love him because that's not a relationship. If it's forced, it's not a relationship. You know the story of the prodigal son? Remember that parable? The story of the prodigal son in Luke 15? Well, the father, he represents God the father. And what happened when that son asked for his inheritance and said, hey, give me my my inheritance. I want to take what I want to take. What did the father do? He said, all right, here you go. And then, and then it said, not many days later, what did the son do? It says he, he decided to get up and leave. What did the father do? Did he force the son to stay? Did he say, nope, you can't, you can't go. I want you to stay. You have to stay with me. You're shaking your head, right? Good, because you, you know the story. Because the, the father let the son go, even if he knew it wasn't what was best for him. Because God does not force or control your will. Because it's a relationship. There can be no such thing as love if it's done by force, if it's done by coercion, if it's done by manipulation, if it's done by control. It's not a real relationship. It's not true love. And so God doesn't operate that way. But sometimes we do. Because we don't like the way something is going, and so we try to control the circumstance. We don't like um, a decision a person is making, and so rather than letting a person choose and have their own will, we try to manipulate it to get what we want. And we don't realize it, but that is a subtle operation of a spirit of witchcraft. Why? Because you are seeking to control another person's will. Not everybody that's operating in a spirit of witchcraft is doing rituals in the dark. Not everybody that's operating in a spirit of witchcraft is part of a witch's coven. 
doing spells and chants and incantations. We'll get to that part, but let's start with the basic first. The fle- works of the flesh. Subtle ways of manipulation. Subtle ways of control. Subtle ways of wanting to get what we want. Does this make sense? For some of us, it's been so ingrained in our family culture that we don't even recognize that it's not healthy. For some of us, it's so ingrained in our, in our upbringing, in the way maybe we saw relationships happen. Maybe we saw unhealthy, destructive, but we didn't realize it. We thought it was normal. This can happen in families all the time. This can happen with parents and children all the time. It can happen with spouses. It can happen with any kind of relationship. And if we're not careful, we, we could be actually a victim of this because we don't, we don't understand that we're, we're allowed to say no. We're allowed to actually set a boundary. We're allowed to actually be autonomous. Or if we're not careful, we can actually operate it in ourselves because it's, it's how we understand how to have relationships. So we've so we got to be really careful about this. So it can start like a work of the flesh, rebellion, uh, subtle tactics, manipulation, control, intimidation, trying to have our way. And then it can go into another realm, especially in the church. I'm going to put it in quotation marks where it's like Christian witchcraft. I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the the. the intentional practice of witchcraft. I'm talking about how that same spirit can actually be at work and do damage to people through supposedly Christian practices. So I gave an example two nights or two Sundays ago, I was preaching on dethroning Jezebel, talking about overthrowing the spirit of Jezebel and one of the branches is witchcraft. So I gave an example uh, of a person who, let's say a person Let's say a person, uh, let's say a guy, you know, falls in love with a girl and wants to marry that girl, but that, but that girl uh, is not interested in, in that relationship. This is the example I gave the other night. So, so in, in classical witchcraft, that guy would go to the witch doctor or the psychic or whoever the person is, the shaman, you know, depending on your culture, and they would say, hey, I want this girl to fall in love with me. With, with me. What can you do to make her fall in love with me? And they, this, this actually happens. They, you go, you know, they go to the person and they pay a certain amount of money and that person does something, does a ritual or, or puts a potion together and says, hey, get, get, get them to drink this potion and they'll fall in love with you. This, this is real life happening in, in our country, not just in Africa and in Haiti and other stuff. Okay, so what is that? That's witchcraft. That's trying to use spiritual power to control that woman's will. That woman decided that they weren't interested in that relationship, being romantic. But because the man wanted to control the situation, he went to the witch doctor and tried to get her to fall in love that way. Does that make sense? Okay, now what's a Christian version of that? A Christian version of that would be that man beginning to pray and say, Oh God! Please make Betty, we'll call her Betty. I hope there's not a Betty in the room. Just first name that came to my mind. Sister Betty. Oh God, please make Betty fall in love with me. Oh God, please make Betty fall in love with me. Now, what is he doing? Using spiritual power to try to control another person's will. What is that defined as? Witchcraft. We have to be super careful that when we are praying, we are not praying our own will. We have to be, the purpose of prayer is not magic. God is not a genie in a bottle. Rub the magic lamp, get three wishes. That's not prayer. That's magic. Witchcraft. Now, can you, can you, now, what would be an appropriate prayer there? You could say, God, I really, I really like this girl. You know, if it's your will, if you would have, if you, if it's your will for us to be together, 
I just put that in your hands, and I ask you to orchestrate that if it's your will. That, that's, a, it's a very, that, that's a safe prayer. You're, you're, then you're submitting it to God. You're not trying to control the person. Now, there's some things we can pray with clear authority and clear faith and clear boldness because we know God's will because it's his word. But there's nothing in the Bible that says Betty's going to fall in love with me. There's no promise in the Bible that says that. Right? So we're on dangerous ground if we start praying. A little play on words. We're actually praying, P-R-E-Y, P-R-E-Y. There's some people I'd rather not pray for me. I covet prayer. I covet, I, just like the Apostle Paul, he says, always asking for prayer. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray. He's always asking. There's some people I don't want praying for me because I don't know what they're praying. They might be, they might be praying whatever they want. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take it a step further, and let's say, let's say that guy, what's the, what's the guy's name? Somebody give me a guy's name. Tim. First name I heard. Sorry, anybody named Tim in the room, or if you're watching, sorry, Tim, but it's just, an, it's just a fictitious person. Now let's say Tim decides to get real spiritual. Not only is he praying to God and saying, oh, God, make Betty fall in love with me. Now he starts prophesying. And he calls Betty up and says, Betty, the Lord told me that we're going to get married. If you're Betty, I hope you're going to say, well, the Lord didn't tell me a thing. (laughs) What is that? Witchcraft. Prophetic manipulation. I've had this happen to me. Years ago, I lived in a different state, so don't think about anyone around here. Years ago, I was at a church, and the pastor of that church was the most prophetically gifted person I had ever met up until that time. I mean, this person, he could, I mean, he could prophesy like just, whew. and he had a genuine gift in the prophetic. But there were some things that were, see, sometimes there's mixture. Someone could, sometimes people can have a true gift. But there's areas of their life that are still open to the enemy or they're not fully given to the Lord or they still have, you know, areas where they're operating in uh, manipulation, right? Balaam was like that. Balaam operated in the prophetic and then he operated in, in, the, in the darkness. And, 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 and this, this guy would, you know, he would prophesy the pain off the walls. But, and he actually, gave, he actually gave my wife and I a prophetic word that was part of our confirmation that we were supposed to move on from the church and I was going to take a position as a youth pastor at another church. There was actually something he had prophesied to us that clearly was a confirmation. But he didn't know that when he was saying it because what he saw didn't seem to relate to it, but it was a confirmation. So then when this opportunity came a few months later, three or four months later, I get, I'm getting um, offered a position as a, as a youth uh, pastor at, at, at another church in the area. And so me, out of wanting to be a good Christian church person, I don't know, church member, whatever. I want to bring him in on the process. I want to say, hey, hey, just so you know, I'm praying about something. You know, my wife and I, um, or, you know, I was, uh, there's a chance that I might be offered a position here at this church. And da, da, da. I'm thinking I'm just, you know, doing the right thing to bring my pastor in on the process. So I don't just say, all of a sudden say, oh, bye, I'm gone. Right? Um, so I'm bringing him in the process. Oh, boy. Let's just say the prophetic word started uh, changing a little bit. And all of a sudden, there was quote-unquote prophetic words that were trying to manipulate us to cause us to stay, as if if we were to take this position, we'd be disobeying God. So what is that? That's using a spiritual gift or spiritual power as a means of control. He was trying to control us to keep us in his church. He didn't want us to leave. But what was God? See, but we, but my wife and I, we're responsible to hear God for ourselves, to weigh, to test, to discern, to pray. We prayed, we discerned, we, 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 we lifted up before the Lord, and we felt a peace in unity together that we were supposed to take this position.
Now, you might not think of that as witchcraft because he wasn't, you know, conjuring the dead or he wasn't, you know, performing a ceremony or doing a ritual. But it's the same type of spirit. It's the same type of spirit. Seeking to control. Parents have to be so careful about this. When their kids grow up, when their kids move out of the house, when their kids get married. You know, you, you know what the foundation of marriage is? They shall leave the father and mother and be joined to the spouse. Well, sometimes parents don't like it when their kids leave. I've had, com- I've had many conversations with people along these lines. Yeah, we feel called to uh, you know, move to a different state, but my parents are threatening to do this if we, if we move to a different state. Well, what is God telling you to do? What if that parent started praying, oh God, don't let Johnny and Susie, just made up other names, don't let Johnny and Susie move to Arizona. Oh God, we don't want them to move to Arizona. We want them to be here close to us. We think they should stay close and have a nice family so we could be close to them, God. Please don't let them move. This happens all the time. It is destructive because you know what happens? Here's the problem with this kind of stuff. It actually releases demonic power. Johnny and Susie are going to start coming under confusion. Johnny and Susie are going to start wondering, what is going on here? I thought we had peace about, you know, moving. Why, why do we feel all this confusion now? Why are we feeling this restlessness? Why are we feeling this heaviness? This, this, anytime somebody operates in, in witchcraft through words, through prayers, through quote-unquote prophet, it actually releases something. We have to be so careful. Pastors do this all the time. Pastors do this all the time. I know people. I, I could tell so many stories. I know people that were cursed because they left their church. Because God was calling them to move to a different church. God was calling them to move on. God was calling them, and so they were slandered, or they were cursed, or they were told this horrible thing is going to happen to you if you leave this church. Or, or you know, it's... See, it's not just like a not fun thing to happen. It actually releases demonic power. Because it's slander. It's word curses. It's the devil uses these things. I hope this makes sense. Okay, we got to learn not to pray in these ways, not to try to manipulate or control people through spiritual means. We have to learn to have healthy boundaries. We have to learn to let people work out their own life, their pers- have their personhood, have their voice, have their will, not try to manipulate or control them to get to do what we want, okay? Okay, so now let's talk about intentional witchcraft. So these are, su- these are subtle ways the spirit of witchcraft works, okay? Then we have intentional Witchcraft, And I read through Deuteronomy 18. It talks about this whole list. Witchcraft, soothsayer, interpreting omens, a sorcerer. Okay, there's, again, so much we could get into. But this is when people are actually intentionally tapping into spiritual power, and they're using various means. It might be spells, trying to cast a spell to get what they want. So, so let's say, um, who's our first guy? Let's say Tim decides, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look up a witchcraft spell to try to make... Um, Betty fall in love with me. So she, so, so Tim looks up online or he gets a book on witchcraft and he decides, oh, if you do this, 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 here's a ritual, here's a formula, and you release this spell and it's going to cause her to try to fall in love with me. So now, 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 now he's getting more into what we think of as classical intentional witchcraft, okay? So they use spells, they use rituals, they use curses, the use of curses to try to bring harm or to bring destruction to people. Involvement with a group 
together, like Wes described, a coven where a group of them get together to, to do their ceremonies, to do their rituals, to try to work together, to try to wield power. And I mean, the, the deeper you go, the darker it gets. The deeper you go, the more um, evil it gets. There's a whole spectrum. Not everybody that gets involved in witchcraft gets involved in the, the darkest of the dark stuff, but there is the darkest of the dark stuff out there. Animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, this stuff happens. Don't think that's just a myth. Don't think it's just made up. Don't think it's just a fantasy world or happening in other countries. It's happening here in this country, all over this nation. And see, here's the thing. The Bible says that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians says he disguises himself as an angel of light. That's why he loves to make things that are so evil seem so innocent. That's why if you go to Barnes & Noble right now, if you go to the Barnes & Noble, you're going to see all kinds of books aimed at children to get them interested in witchcraft. You're going to see all the Disney movies coming out with Hocus Pocus, right? The Harry Potters of the world. The, the, um, I don't even know what's all out there. I hardly pay attention. You got the Ouija board. Oh, it's a game. It's just, you know, what is a Ouija board? It's, a, it's an attempt to contact spirits. And people think, oh, it's just fun. It's just messing around. It's just... You're, it's literally opening, opening a door to evil spirits. Oh, I'm going to read my horoscope. I'm just going to, I'm going to go see a palm reader one time just as a joke. I'm going to call the psychic hotline just to see what they would say. I'm just going to see what, what, what would they say. Is it, you know, do they know anything? Oh, I'm on a fair and there's a booth. There's a fortune telling booth, tarot card reading. I'm going to go and just see what they have to say, right? And people do this. Here's the thing. Any involvement in the occult is an open door to evil spirits. Any involvement, any participation in the occult is an open door to evil spirits, whether you realize it or not. Whether you realize what you're doing or not, whether you think you're doing it for fun. The devil doesn't care if you did it for fun or for serious. All he knows is that you crossed into a territory that God said do not cross into. All he knows is that you stepped over a boundary that the Lord has said you, you, you shall not step over this boundary. And so when you do, it's like you're opening the door and saying, come on in to unclean spirits. The first guy I ever cast demons out of, he had messed around with a Ouija board. He, he was just kind of interested and got a little bit. He, he didn't become a full-blown witch. He didn't, you know, he didn't even you know, do the stuff Wes was talking about. He just, thought, he just tried to dabble in it. Opens the door to dark spirits. Opens the door to depression. Opens the door to suicide. Opens the door to torment. So again, you have this whole spectrum of, of things. Some people just mess around, they dabble, they read about it, they, they get a little bit curious, and they just try things out, all the way into full-blown involvement, getting involved in dark practices. So there's, there's three groups of people I want to address here tonight, and, and then we're going to go into ministry, and we're going we're to minister in these areas. This was a very short teaching. We could have done hours on, but I'm trying to be succinct and try to get us to a ministry because I think God wants to encounter people, set people free. Three groups of people. Number one, believers. Believers in Jesus Christ, but in the past you have dabbled in witchcraft. You've dabbled in messing around. Or you've been actually doing the Christian version of it. Like you've been actually trying to use prayer to control people. You've been trying to use prophecy to try to get your will done. Okay, that, you got to repent of that. If you've been using spiritual things, like you've been trying to use, you know, God in prayer just to try to get your way. 
Okay? Or you dabbled in stuff in the past. Maybe you just opened doors in the past innocently, not knowing it. And so there's still stuff there. There's still darkness there. There's still heaviness there that came in through the open door. Today's a day of deliverance. Today's a day of deliverance. You're going to get set free tonight. If you will repent, if you will renounce, if you will cut off every trace, everything connected to occultism, to witchcraft, if you'll renounce it, and even stuff you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you'll, you'll, say, you'll say, I mean, I remember I was preaching a deliverance service one time, and there was, a, there was a man who's a worship leader, he's a godly person, but as I was going through the prayer of deliverance, he got delivered of something related to the occult because of a, something he had done. I can't remember if it was like a game or a, some sort of dark music. or I can't remember. It was years ago. But he got delivered from something connected to witchcraft and the occult because of just something he had gotten involved with. And I believe that's going to happen tonight. There's going to be people that get delivered. A second group of people that I believe God wants to minister to tonight is that is those who are under the effect or the influence of of witchcraft that was done against you. Under the influence of a curse. Under the influence of witchcraft. Either through the subtle control, manipulation, domination, or the Christian version, or the intentional version. You, you realize that witches put curses on people. That's a big part of what they do. They, 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 they will put, this is, if you, you read about anyone that's been involved in it and then they came out of it and they, and they uh, Wes could explain this. Anyone that came out of it, anyone, they will, they will try to put curses. They'll try to come into churches. They'll try to put curses on the leadership. They'll try to come in and sow seeds of division. They'll, they'll, they'll try to disguise themselves uh, as an angel of light, right? This, this, this is not fiction. This is not fantasy, And we shouldn't operate in fear. We shouldn't operate in like fear of darkness, but we also shouldn't operate in ignorance or deny that there is actual power involved in it. It actually does, can have influence or can attack a person, especially if there's doors open in a person's life. But even if there's not doors open in your life, it can release warfare against you. It can release, and some of us sitting in the room I believe that you've actually come under demonic influence and spiritual warfare because of curses that were released against you that you may or may not even know about. Some of it was just word curses and people saying things and releasing slander, releasing false accusations, and some of it was a literal witch releasing curses. You might think I'm crazy. This is, this is real life. You will get delivered tonight from those curses. You will get delivered tonight from demonic assignments that were sent against you through slander and witchcraft and word curses, false accusations, uh, dem- uh, prayers and prophetic words that were not of God. You will get delivered from the influence. How do you do that? Well, forgive the person. Forgive the person. Jesus said, bless those who curse. We don't operate in the same spirit. God will judge. God will avenge. You forgive And you break the power of it, and you place that person in God's hands. God will break it off tonight. God will deliver people tonight. Those who are watching on the live stream, God will deliver you tonight. Last group of people is is those who are actually involved in intentional witchcraft. There might be people sitting in this room. There might be people watching right now on the live stream. There might be people who watch this video later. And you actually have been involved intentionally, just like Wes was, coming into a church building, but yet he was getting ready to seal a coven on Halloween night a few days later. There might be people in the room right now. I'm not ignorant of that fact. Or there might be people watching this right now who see this. And you've, been, and you've been getting involved, not just dabbling in it, but you're actually involved with witchcraft or the occult realm or satanic stuff. You name it. And my word, my word to you is repent before it is too late. Repent before it is too late. 
Nothing is worth losing your soul in hell. No amount of power, no amount of gain, no amount of influence, no amount of control that you think you might be having is worth worth it. The devil never plays fair. It always costs you something. It's never worth it. It never ends well. I can tell you that right now, unless there's repentance. It just gets darker. It gets darker. The devil exerts more control over a person's life. Any amount of power, any amount of influence, it's fleeting. I believe we're going to see a harvest of souls from people coming out of the, the, the demonic realm. I believe we're going to see a harvest of souls of people repenting from witchcraft, repenting from Satanism, repenting from the New Age, repenting from divination, and coming out in genuine repentance and getting delivered and getting healed and getting set free. I also believe that God gives people a window of time. God gives people a window of time. The Bible said that God does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. He hopes that they will turn. God gives a window of time, but he also will judge. Like it says about Jezebel in Revelation 2, I gave her time to repent, but she refused. What came next? Judgment. And I believe that there are people that, who have been in that lifestyle, in that realm, That God's been giving opportunities. God's been knocking on the door. God's been saying, this is your opportunity. What if Wes wouldn't have have yielded to the Holy Spirit that night, 30 years ago tonight? What if he wouldn't have yielded? God didn't force him to do it. God was at work, clearly. God was going after him, but there was still an element where he still had to yield. He, He still could have quenched that. I don't know when a person's last opportunity is. I don't know how many more chances Wes would have had after that night. I don't know. I'm not God. But I know that when the Holy Spirit is moving and convicting and drawing a person, that is a critical moment because there's a fork in the road. And when a person hardens their heart at that point, what happens is then the next time it's actually harder to yield to the Holy Spirit because their heart becomes more and more hardened. And eventually, God just does, will hand a person over. It happens. It's real life. It might not be popular in today's modern Christian uh, vernacular, but it is truth from the Bible. So I I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody here in this room tonight, or I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody that's going to watch this later. I don't know. I'm not saying I know. I'm just saying if if there's anybody that you've been involved in this type of practices, I mean, in today's world, you have people that are professing Christians that think they can get involved in witchcraft. So who knows what's, what people are coming in with? Seriously. I mean, we're in such a society where up is down, down is up. And I mean, the standard of Christianity has gotten so blurred and the plumb line has gotten so removed. You literally have people that claim that they can be a Christian and a witch at the same time. No fellowship with light and darkness cannot cannot happen. God calls people to a fork in the road, and he calls you to repentance because he wants you to receive salvation and deliverance. Let's stand to our feet. Tyler, would you come up here? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are here. Holy Spirit, I ask you to fall in this room. I ask for the Spirit of the living God to come and manifest presence and manifest power. I ask you to pour out your love. I ask you to speak to each person, God. God, wherever they're at in their life right now, God, however this message would apply to them, I pray that the Spirit of God would drive things home. Lord, you would pinpoint areas, God. You would speak clearly. I thank you, God, for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you that today is a day of deliverance. I thank you for freedom tonight, God, from the power of witchcraft. It's going to be broken from people's lives tonight in Jesus' name. God, whether it was their own involvement or ways that they had dabbled or dove into it, or whether it was things that were released against them, curses, 
or even soulish prayers and manipulation, God, you're going to break the power of it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lord, that you are the King. I declare, Jesus, that you are Lord in this place, over this people, over everybody watching this on the stream and the video right now. In Jesus' name, I declare you are Lord. Let's just begin to worship Jesus right now. Let's begin to worship him right now. Let's just begin to enthrone Jesus. Let's begin to worship the Lamb of God that was slain. Let's begin to honor King Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We praise your name. You are greater, Jesus. Your name is above every single name. You are worthy, Jesus. You are holy, holy, holy. Let's just begin to magnify the Lord. Begin to magnify the name of Jesus. Jesus, let your name be magnified over all the earth. Let your name be magnified over this region right now. Let your name be magnified, God, over this season, Lord. Let your name be magnified, King Jesus. We honor you. We worship you. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you move? Would you release great grace? Would you release, Lord, your power, your freedom? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to pray right now. Begin to pray for a couple minutes. If you have a prayer language, begin to pray in tongues for a minute or two. Let's just, let's just come into God's presence and just begin to pray in the Spirit and ask Him to fill this place with glory. Fill this place with your glory, Jesus. Fill this place with your glory, Jesus. We honor you. Jesus, I ask you to walk through this place and begin to touch your people, begin to heal your people. I thank you that tonight, Lord, you're healing people from the effects of control, of manipulation. I thank you that tonight, Lord, you're delivering people from the influence of abusive relationships, destructive relationships. I thank you that you're breaking curses, Lord. You're breaking word curses. You're breaking witchcraft curses. I thank you, Jesus. Even right now, begin to move. I believe some people tonight are going to get healed physically as these curses are broken. I think there's going to be some physical healing even that begins to happen in your body because some of the stuff you've been facing in your body has not been physical. It's had a spiritual root. I thank you, Jesus. Would you stretch out your hand and heal tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. in a corporate prayer, all together, a prayer for deliverance. I know we've zoned in on this one particular area, but we'll minister, I'll minister corporately, and then we'll have teams up here. We'll see how the Holy Spirit leads, but whatever your need for deliverance is, we'll pray. We'll pray for you, but we're going to zone in on this for a little bit first, okay? I want everyone to pray this out after me. I want you to do it with faith, with authority, with boldness. And after we pray out a couple of things, I'm going to give you some space and time to make it personal to you. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit, but let's begin to pray this out, okay? Say this out. Say, Heavenly Father, I come into your holy presence by the precious blood of Jesus. I worship and honor you as the one true living God. And I submit to Jesus Christ as my Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I look to you as my only Savior and as my Deliverer, as my Healer. I thank you that you came to this earth in the flesh, that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you rose from the dead. I thank you that because of your finished work, you paid the price to set me free from sin, from 
from every unclean spirit, from every curse in the name of Jesus. I ask for your Holy Spirit to come upon me, to bring freedom to me, healing to me, and deliverance to me in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that before we resist the devil, we're supposed to be submitted to God. It says that in James 4. It says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. That means that submitting to God is what positions us. So I want to make sure we're in a place of being submitted to God tonight. And that, might, that means different things to different people. For some of you, that means repentance from sin, turning away from sin, idolatry, immorality, any of the stuff I mentioned tonight with witchcraft. If there's been stuff in your past where you dabbled with it and messed with it, tonight's the night to fully repent fully renounce it, fully cut it off. For some of you, it might, it might mean forgiveness, forgiving people that hurt you, that harmed you, that abused you, not, not minimizing what they did or saying it was okay, not saying you should allow those things to happen, but you can release the person and choose to forgive. And then renouncing anything you need to renounce, which is the complete severing of something, okay? So I'm going to lead us to pray those out, and then I'll give you some space. Pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I submit my life to you. I want every area of my life to agree with you and with your word. I come into the light. I confess my sin to you, and I turn away from it because I want to live a life pleasing to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, I want you to take a couple minutes right now and begin to, in your own words, begin to pray and make it personal. I don't know all of your situations. Begin to pray and make it personal. Whatever you need to repent of, begin to repent of it. Whatever you need to renounce, begin to renounce. If there's people you need to forgive who have cursed you, hurt you or abused to begin to forgive, to say, Jesus, I choose to forgive. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a couple minutes just right now between you and the Lord, begin to do that business with the Lord. do a prayer here to completely renounce witchcraft, every form of it, whether it's something you've been involved with yourself or whether it's something that was released against you in some way, shape, or form. We're going to do a, a, a prayer to make a clean break renunciation and break the power of it right now in Jesus' name. So I want you to pray this out. Say, Lord Jesus, I completely renounce 
every form of witchcraft or of the occult. I completely renounce every practice that you have said is forbidden. I completely renounce any way that I have been involved in witchcraft or any of these practices. And I completely renounce and break the power of any way that witchcraft was done against me. I break the power of every curse, every spell, every ritual, every incantation, and I release myself from its influence by the authority of Jesus' name and because of his blood. I ask for the blood of Jesus to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness and from all the effects of witchcraft. I renounce the spirit of control. I renounce the spirit of manipulation. I renounce the spirit of intimidation in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna have my ministry team begin to come to the front. We're gonna do one more step of resisting the devil and commanding any unclean spirits connected to these things to go now. Some of you probably already feel stuff going on inside of you, or lifting from you, or happening. But you're gonna, some of you are gonna begin to feel more stuff leaving you, and just just focus on Jesus. Don't worry about what's happening in the room or what you might be feeling or not feeling. Just keep your eyes fixed on the Lord and just yield to the Holy Spirit. Father, would you pour out your presence, pour out your healing, pour out your grace. I feel like the Lord's going to break some ties tonight connected to other individuals, other people. Where there's been a, a tie, like a controlling tie to that person, like a controlling relationship. It's destructive. It's not been a healthy connection. It's been, not been based on love and respect and honor. It's been based on manipulation and control. I believe God's going to sever that tonight in Jesus' name. So if I'm, speak, if I'm speaking to you, just, just you know, make sure you receive in this ministry time and also get prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray this out. Let's do, all do, let's do this all out loud. Say, I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And by the authority of Jesus' name, I speak to every unclean spirit that has any influence in my life. I command you to come out. Go in the name of Jesus. Say this also. I break the power of witchcraft from off of my life. I command the spirit of witchcraft to get out now in the name of Jesus. I declare that every curse is broken by the power of the blood of Jesus. I command every spirit connected to witchcraft, connected to a curse, come out now in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your hands up for a minute while I pray for you. Father, I ask over every person in this room and every person watching this right now, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon them mightily. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them to break the yoke, Father, in Jesus' name. By the authority of Jesus' name, I command every unclean spirit come out now in Jesus' name. I command every unclean spirit influencing the people, come out now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I break the power of every curse. I break the power of every spell. I break the power of every ritual. I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the spirit of witchcraft, come out in Jesus' name. I command every spirit of witchcraft, come out, come out, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every spirit connected to the occult, come out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of divination, come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of divination, out, 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 go in Jesus' name. I command every spirit of the new age, come out in Jesus' name. Every spirit connected to Buddhism, out, 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 go, 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 out. Every spirit connected to yoga, come out in Jesus' name. Every spirit connected to Hinduism, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit connected to um, 
Transcendental meditation. Out, out, out. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every dark spirit, every witchcraft spirit, come out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. I break the power of voodoo. Out in Jesus' name. I break the power of every curse. Go, go, go. In Jesus' name, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to keep ministering for a while, so if you need to put your hands down at any point, you can do that. Just stay focused on Jesus. Lord Jesus, would you move in this place? Would you walk through this room? I break the power of destructive relationships. I break the power of manipulation and control and domination. Any spirit that oppresses you coming from another person, trying to control your life, trying to oppress your voice, I break the power of that spirit of control. Come out in Jesus' name. I break the power of that spirit that tries to dominate or oppress you. I say, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command spirit of oppression, come out in Jesus' name. Every spirit that oppresses, leave them now. Lift off, lift off, go in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, I command you, come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command that spirit of fear, anxiety, out, go, go, in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of intimidation. I command spirit of intimidation, come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every spirit of intimidation, come out now, come out now. Go, in Jesus' name. Go from their lives, leave them by the authority of Jesus' name. By the authority of Jesus' name, I rebuke the spirit of death. Spirit of death, I command you, come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command that spirit of death. I command that spirit of the fear of death. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Go in Jesus' name. Leave their lives out from them. By the authority of Jesus' name, I command you to go from their minds. Spirit of torment, come out in Jesus' name. Torment, come out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of torment, come out, come out, come out, come out. I call you out now, leave their minds. Torment in the night, come out. Torment in dreams, come out in Jesus' name right now. I forbid you to torment them in their dreams. I say, come out from their minds right now by the authority of Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of insomnia, come out in Jesus' name, out by the blood of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of rebellion, I command spirit of rebellion. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of addiction, I break your power. I command the spirit of addiction out in Jesus' name. Out in the name of Jesus. Leave their lives. Leave their lives. Father, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would minister to anybody in this room that has come under the power of witchcraft, the influence of the spirit of witchcraft through other people whether it's through their prayers that are not of you, soulish or demonic prayers, prophetic manipulation that's not of you, or whether it's through curses, spells, rituals, and intentional witchcraft, I pray right now over every person in this room that's come under the power of witchcraft. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and minister to them right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and just touch them right now. I ask right now that the fire of the Holy Spirit will burn up every effect of the spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ right now. of every demonic assignment. I command it to be broken now. Lift it off right now. That spirit of heaviness, come out in the name of Jesus. That spirit of heaviness, that spirit of confusion, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. That spirit of suicide, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to go. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. By the authority of Jesus' name, I break the power 
of every demonic assignment of witchcraft. I break the power of it. I command it to be uprooted from the lives and come out from them now, lift off now, and go back to hell in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for just lifting off heaviness, bringing lightness, bringing clarity over the mind instead of confusion. I just feel like some people where there's like a dark cloud that's just been covering you over your mind. God's lifting that dark cloud off right now. God's lifting that dark cloud off right now over your mind, over your thoughts. I command that dark cloud to be lifted off, that confusion, that heaviness, that despair, even fatigue and tiredness. I just break it off. I command it to be lifted off right now, lifted off right now in Jesus' name. And God, I ask you to stretch out your hand to heal physical bodies right now. Lord, any way that there was physical issues that were caused by witchcraft or, or unclean spirits or spirits of infirmity, I break the power of the spirit of infirmity. I command that spirit of infirmity to come out right now from their bodies. Spirit of infirmity, I command to come out from the bodies right now in Jesus' name. I command every sickness that was released from a demonic spirit, I command it to come out now. Pain, come out now. Sickness, I command you to leave right now. I pray the power of the Holy Spirit begin to move in their body, to touch those parts where they need healing right now. Healing right now. God, I ask you to send your angels to minister to your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you minister? Would you release grace? Would you release peace? How many people have felt something lift off them tonight? Anybody has felt something lift? Lift your hands up real high. Real high and wave them just so more people we can all see. Look at that. Look at that. Lots of hands waving. Let's give the Lord Jesus a clap of praise for, for that. It got brighter in here. <laughs> it's lighter. Holy Spirit, would you just continue to minister to your people? Thank you for lifting off heaviness. Thank you for breaking curses. Thank you for breaking demonic assignments. Thank you for peace. Thank you for freedom. Holy Spirit, would you touch their lives? Would you fill their hearts with your presence, with your love? We worship you, Jesus. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. Jesus, I pray that you would just begin to touch people and minister. Lord, you know exactly what people need right now. You know exactly how, how they need to receive your ministry. Would you just begin to minister? By the power of the Holy Spirit, would you begin to fill their hearts? God, I pray for healing of the hearts tonight. And I pray for deliverance and healing for those that came out of spiritual abuse. I believe the Lord wants to heal people from spiritual abuse. That's anytime God's word or a position of authority or something connected to God is used to control or dominate people. Some of you, I believe, actually came out of churches where that was done to you by your former leaders, pastors, or maybe there was actually a measure of abuse verbally that was released against you, even maybe scripture being misused to try to, uh, yeah, I just believe God's ministering to people right now in that area. Father, right now, Lord, anyone that came under spiritual abuse, Lord, I just ask for your Holy Spirit to bring clarity to their minds where there's been confusion, to bring healing right now over their hearts. I break the power of the lying spirit. I break the power of the spirit of condemnation. I command that spirit of condemnation come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I command that lying spirit that's whispering lies to your mind right now come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the power of slander. I break the power of word curses. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, any way that your word was misused, God, I ask that you would uproot it and pull it out, God. Any way, God, that it was twisted and coerced, Lord, I break the power of that influence. I command the spirits behind that demonic power, come out in Jesus' name. I command to be broken. I loose you from the influence of every type of spiritual abuse, religious abuse, condemnation, the confusion that came with it, I command to go. God, I ask that you would lead these ones into a new type of relationship with you, where there's freedom, where there's joy, where there's a revelation of your love, God. I think that you want to give a deeper revelation of your love into people's hearts, because they've only known you through that lens of that control and in a system, Lord, that was abusive. So I pray right now, would you just give a new lens? Renew the mind, God. Renew the mind right now. I pray a supernatural renewing of the mind, God. I pray that it wouldn't take years even, God. I pray it would, it would, you would just touch them supernaturally, God, and renew their minds, God. Wash over their minds and hearts, God, from the effects of control, manipulation. Right now, would you release them from it? In Jesus' name, God, would you do it? I break the power of any word curses that were spoken by spiritual leaders that were destructive words or false accusations or slander. I break the power of those words. I uproot them from your soul. I cancel their influence on your life. I command it to come out now in Jesus' name. I break the power of any destructive words that were released even through religious leaders, spiritual leaders, pastors, leaders. I break the power of those word curses. I uproot them now. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. a sense that there's some people in the room that maybe you yourself didn't dabble in the occult or witchcraft, but it's actually in your family, like as a family history. And so it actually, the enemy tries to take advantage of that, tries to kind of get in there because of the Bible, it talks about the iniquities of the fathers and you're not guilty of that sin. You're not held responsible for it, but the enemy can still try to move through a family line. And so if, if I'm, if I'm talking to you and that's, that's true of you, I want you to make sure when we come into ministry time that you come up and tell the person that you're getting prayer from, um, that, and they'll lead you through a prayer to break break that generational curse. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Release your freedom. Release your grace. Release your joy. Release your joy. Release your joy. I know this topic can maybe feel like a heavy subject, but God wants to release joy to people. God wants to release joy to people. God wants to release a new praise. God wants to release a new new sense of lightness and joy and praise. Can Can we just worship the Lord for a minute or two? Can we just praise him? Can we just honor him? Jesus, we praise you. God, we honor you tonight. Jesus, I thank you that you fill us with a new joy tonight, God, the joy of our salvation, God. I thank you, Lord, you give us a revelation of the victory of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you are light and in you there is no darkness. God, that you bring peace, Lord, that your perfect love casts out all fear tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are seated on the throne. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, God. Just put your hand on your heart and just pray this prayer to be filled with the Holy Spirit afresh. Pray this out. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that because of the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed and I'm forgiven and you've made me a temple for the Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Let every area of my life be filled with your Holy Spirit. Let every area that used to be under demonic influence be now filled 
with the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Now just receive that for a minute. Father, would you release that, God? Would you fill their life with the Holy Spirit? Would you let, let rivers of living water flow from their innermost being, Lord? Fill their hearts, fill their lives. In the name of Jesus. Spirit. Thank you, Father.